Hello everyone, it's Jan from Small Time Outlaws once again bringing you the fourth video in my tutorial series on beginning game programming in Monkey. Uh, in this video we'll be learning about the different arithmetic operators in Monkey as well as implicit conversion and typecasting which comes into play when dealing with variables of different types and these mathematical operations. So let's get it started. Let's go open up Monk and if you're like me, you're probably thinking in the last couple videos, now Jim, why do we have these add functions when we've got the perfectly good plus symbol to use to add two variables together? And well, frankly, there's really no good answer to that question. These are actually terrible, terrible functions to have, so we're going to get rid of them. And let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff up here, too. We don't need it anymore. And we can get rid of these. Okay. And now, well, we're going to start off with just your basic math operators. I'm sure this doesn't need too much explanation. It's pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to show you real quickly. So let's say the plus symbol. We've already been over this. Not numbers. Getting way ahead of myself here. Your number, number plus two. There's your addition operator. Pretty simple. And you can say. And you got your, okay, let's try and type correctly. And you got your subtraction operator, and you've got your multiplication operator. And finally, this the division operator is a little bit special uh, when dealing with integers. What's going to happen is if you divide an integer by a number, you're, you're going to get the f value rounded down to the nearest whole integer. So let's say if we do a number divided by 5. Let's say we didn't do all this stuff, so the number is still 14. What's going to happen is you're going to get 2. Normally, you say what, you get what 2.8. Well, in this case, you're going to get 2. It will. You're going to get 2. It rounds down. And so in the same fashion, if you divide an integer by a, a number, by a value larger than the initial value, say 16, the final result is going to be 0. And that's just specific to integers. Desk floats, works, you know, just as you think it should. And then as far as dealing with order of operations, I, most, I think just about all programming languages, it's going to be same as what you learned back in elementary school math, you know, your parentheses, or that, what is it, PEDMAS these days or something. I learned it as PEMDAS. So parentheses, exponent, multiple divide, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. That's the order. So same thing in programming languages, except in this case, in Monkey, there is no exponential operator, so it's going to be parentheses first followed by multiplication or division, whichever like it goes left to right in that case, and then followed by addition and subtraction. So well, just a quick example, say number is assigned 8 divided by, and we'll throw a parentheses in there, 6 times 5, uh, minus 2. So what this, what it's going to do is first it's going to see the parentheses and calculate what's inside there first, and it's going to find the multiplication, and it's going to multiply that, and then it's going to subtract 2, and then finally it's going to divide 8 and then send that back to number. And because 8 is an integer and 30 minus 2 is way bigger than 8, the final result is going to be 0. Okay, and that's your order of operations. There's really not too much to it. Right? And I'm going to quickly go over the assignment operators. So you don't have, so instead of having to type number equals number divided by something, you can just do number plus equals 2 or number minus equals 2 or you guessed it number multiply equals 2 and number divide uh, equals 2 and basically what this does is it takes number adds 2 to it and then assigns that final value back to number so pretty simple and the last basic 
operator I'm going to introduce you to is the modulus operator. Now in most programming languages it is the percent symbol and I really wish it was that case in monkey but it's not. I think it's because of a background in basic programming languages that the author has so in monkey it's spelled out as mod which isn't you know too much of a problem and what modulus does is divide two numbers and return the remainder as I started to spell out the remainder of those numbers so let's say you take 8 mod 2 2 goes into 8 four times and there's no remainder so the result of this calculation is going to be 0 no remainder so let's say it changes the 2 to a 5 so 8 mod 2 5 goes into 8 one time with 3 remaining and that's what your final value is going to be. Three is going to get assigned to number. And that comes in in handy later on when we start making games. You will see it's great operator. But you could say it's modulus. <laughs> All right, going on to implicit conversion. Now, implicit conversion is the underlying conversion that takes place when you're performing these math operations on variables of differing types. So the first example of implicit conversion I'm going to show you is going from int to float. So let's say you have, let's say decimal, you want to assign it number. Now, I have no idea what number is at this point because of all these operations, but let's just say it's 14. So what's going to happen is it's going to convert monkeys just can convert number to 14.0 and assign it to decimal. Pretty simple, right? So let's say, let's go back the other way. Let's say number is assigned decimal. Now a lot of languages aren't going to like this at all because float, floating point values are stored differently in memory. They usually have, take up more space, more bits, and they're f the, the way they're stored is a lot different than integers. So they'll complain about losing floating point precision and all this. And so what you normally have to do is typecast it. I'll show you like, if you were to do it in monkey, it would be like this. You do int and then enclose decimal. And that's how you typecast in monkey. But you don't have to do that in monkey. It'll do it for you. Just going, it'll see, it'll recognize you get a float going to an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to an integer and stick it in there. And then you can also do the same thing with strings. As I showed you earlier, you, can be, you could add strings, whatnot. You can also just take a string. Let's see, we got words. Let's see, words is assigned 14.8. This would cause a lot of problems in other languages, but in Monkey, it, it loves it. So I'll show you. So let's go ahead and print words off, run it. Words is now 14.8. Kind of cool, right? Now, you don't want to do that too much. I got the wrong thing open. You don't want to do that too much in your program, especially if you get more lines of code, because these implicit conversions aren't things that just happen instantly. It still has to perform, especially if you're going to convert like float to string. It's got to do a lot of, there's a lot of code, well, not a lot, but there's quite a bit of code that goes into that. And you're doing that every time you're assigning a float to a string, and that can get, that can, if, it, if your program's long enough, that can cause some lag. Not much, not much, but some. And it's good not to, you know, not to do this. It's best to work with variables of the same type. But in case, you know, in case you don't want to, in case you're just throwing up something real fast, real simple, Monkey works great for that. And I'll show you, and now just to give you another example of typecasting, one thing Monkey won't do is go from string to flow automatically or string to int. So I'm just going to show you real fast. So you want to set number to a string. You can't. It won't let you just go one f like this. See, so yeah, let me. I'll try it. I'll show you. It's going to complain. Oh, can't convert string to int. Well, wait, monkey. Yes, you can. So we're going to use our int typecast. Enclose our one two four five one in there. And print number. So you can see that it works. And there you go. One two four five one. And that is typecasting, implicit conversion, and your basic math operators. Uh, so I, once again, I hope you learned something. 
please join me in the next one. If you have any questions, email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or lay some comments on me. And I'll see you in the next video.